Good day. We're here at Ultimate Politics, UP News, 1510, 1570 AM, Mile High Sports Radio. I'm your host, Wade Norris, and we're here with Richard Eidlin and Carmen Rhodes from the Apollo Alliance. Guys, welcome to the show. And Wade, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us, Wade. And uh, so we've talked in the past about Colorado being the epicenter of the green energy revolution and solutions for our economy. We, we can't continue to go into a situation where we have fossil fuels from foreign regimes that are hostile to the United States. We can't keep paying three and four dollars a gallon of gas for transportation. We have here in Colorado all the wind and solar power that we need. And we also have the National Renewable Energy Lab and the School of Mines. We have legislature and we have a governor that are for going forward in this direction. We even have the p political will. We've passed Amendment 37. We've passed Fast Tracks in 2004. Uh, there are more ballot initiatives this year that look like they're going to pass promoting clean energy. People want this. Now we have to look at, okay, now that we want it, how do we get there as far as the jobs and, and how do we make the infrastructure and how do we get there? You know, what, what are you guys doing and what's the Apollo Alliance and, and what is, you know, for us? Go ahead, Richard. Well, the Apollo Alliance is a national coalition of business, labor, and environmental community groups focused on a pretty simple message, which is that we can grow the economy in a sustainable, prosperous way by investing in clean energy technologies that will result in millions of good jobs that get created across the United States. Millions of good jobs. Yeah, we, we say millions of good jobs, and I, I use that figure because a number of studies, some that we've conducted, others by trade associations and consulting firms have verify that there are literally millions of jobs in a variety of sectors, in the automotive sector, in the infrastructure, in construction, in engineering, in the service industry, that would produce these, these types of jobs um, that would impact electrical contractors, construction workers, engineers, marketing people, and people who are building and installing these new technologies, bringing them into the market. And, and you also talked about that you, the Apollo Alliance, one of the things you're looking to do is to go into urban centers where there have been loss of manufacturing jobs historically for the past 20 years and retrain and, and re-employ workers right. to, to make solar, uh, I guess solar panels or, or the intricate parts that go into wind turbines. Yeah, historically, as, as you probably know, you know, some of the most uh, important technologies that have been developed in the United States but have been commercialized elsewhere and have now been reintroduced into the U.S. So you, examples of that are in the solar and wind industry. <clears throat> and as we look out, particularly in the industrial Midwest, we find tremendous opportunity to create a manufacturing base again. There are lots of facilities there that are lying dormant. There are many skilled workers. What we need is both the political will and the capital to bring those jobs back so that component parts for the wind industry, for instance, could be manufactured in Ohio and Michigan. And at the same time, state legislatures need to become customers. They need to be passing legislation that buys, that, that basically uses the technologies that come out of those factories. And uh, we've got you know good examples of, Carmen, you mentioned that here in Colorado, Colorado's got one of the um, best light rail systems, and the citizens of Colorado voted in 2004 through Fast Tracks to expand that all along the major metropolitan area. How did that? How is that going to help? You know, workers in Colorado, and you know, that's both cleaning up the environment, but it's also how's it helping the workers. Yeah, thank you. Well, I'm with an organization called Presk, and we're a local organization that um, shares a lot of the values of the Apollo Alliance. We're working to create and retain good paying jobs here in the metro area, create and retain low and moderate income housing, and to do those things with environmental sustainability in mind. And we really believe that Fast Tracks is an opportunity to connect environmental sustainability with economic sustainability for workers, but it's not going to just happen. We have to be systematic and strategic about how that happens so that for the people who are building the rail system, that that's done by construction workers who are making good wages and have health care. And for the transit stops that are going to be all along and throughout the metro area, that we're maximizing that transit opportunity and ensuring that we're creating good paying jobs at those transit stops and that we have low and moderate income housing at those stops so that the promise of fast tracks 
delivers um, an economic sustainable metro area in addition to an environmentally sustainable metro area. And you mentioned also before the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, uh, they, are, they have embraced this new direction by, well, Right. I, I think it's one of the best kept secrets in Colorado, actually. I, I think what a lot of people don't realize is that um, organized labor and specifically the building trades are really training this next generation of construction workers that have the skills that are needed to use the new technologies and to be able to um, build with environmental sustainability. And so the electrical workers here in Denver have installed a solar panel at their union hall. It was used as a training opportunity for some of the folks that were learning those new skills. And now, as a result of that solar installation, they're saving hundreds of dollars in energy costs a year as a union. And I think it's just a great example of how organized labor is a partner and how we can really be at the table around the new energy economy. Well, uh, you know, we've talked about this in the past. Colorado is literally sitting on 20 times the natural renewable energy and wind and solar energy, uh, 20 times the amount of energy we need to power the state. You know, basically in Colorado, we have enough energy to power the Midwest. Uh, and all we need to do is have the legislation and have groups like this working on crafting legislation to start building these new plants, these new solar power plants and wind power plants, perhaps others like geothermal. Uh, so what are the what are the plans going forward? What would you guys like to see happen? You know, you've got training programs that you want to put in place, but ultimately, what is the big picture for long-term economic stimulation from this movement? Well, one of the real challenges that Colorado has <clears throat> is competing with other states in, on a capital uh, basis. Uh, states like Texas, California, New York, Massachusetts, have much larger funds that they're using to attract and retain companies to come here and create many of those jobs that we're talking about. <clears throat> so the big issue, or a big issue, is whether the oil and, and natural gas industry, the severance tax, whether any of those funds can be allocated towards the furtherance of the clean energy industry. And <clears throat> there really is this uh, dynamic about how we're gonna grow the, the industry here Many of those companies are coming here because of the skilled workforce, because of the NREO, because of the university system, because we're in the epicenter, as you mentioned. But we do need to have more funding in place. So that's something that Apollo Alliance and Fresk is concerned with, and we hope the legislature will come up with a creative solution. And as you mentioned, there'll be <coughs> excuse me, a bond referendum on the ballot in November that we think is important. Yeah, and that bond referendum is a clean energy progress fund. Go for it. Uh, and we don't and want I, Colorado to get left behind on this either. So. so I just wanted to add something, which is that a, a lot of states are, as Richard said, they're looking at how to use their economic development dollars as leverage to bring more companies and really to attract more companies here to Colorado. And I think that our perspective locally is that that is a great tool for our state to use to try to build that economy. But along with that money, with those incentives, we should be attaching strings around what kind of jobs those companies are committing to create. Are they going to be jobs with health care? Are they going to be jobs that are sustainable? And because it's, you know, these are state dollars and really our economic development dollars, the state of Colorado has a unique opportunity to create those concrete strings and really help ensure sustainability. Well, you guys have been just awesome today. Thanks for being on the show. Is there a website or an event that's going on where people can come to and find out about this? Yeah, as far as the Apollo Alliance, you can go to www.apolloalliance.org and uh, get all kinds of information about what's happening across the country. And to learn more about what's going on locally, you can go to www.fresc.org. That's F R E S C.org. Guys, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Yeah, and in Colorado, yeah, we, we're going to have a great future with, with guys like this working to get the green economy working for us. And, and Colorado uh, could be and should be the leader in this, this field. Once again, this is Ultimate Politics here on Mile High Sports Radio, 1510, 1570 AM. I'm your host, Wade, and you can always email me, wade at ultimatepolitics.net. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.